Hi guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. I hope you're all well. Um, I'm back for a regular update video because it's been about three months since I did one, so I thought I should probably do one. Um, you probably saw the video I put up a few days ago with my mum. I realised there were audio problems. I'm sorry that it was very quiet. I hope that most of you could turn it up high enough to hear what was said. <laughs> At least you might have enjoyed looking at the pictures. Um, I think you got the message though. The message was you can pre-order anything from Nashville from my mum's shop. I'll be going over to Nashville Needlework Market in March and picking up things. Um, yeah, and I'm very excited. Um, so go and watch that video if you need more information or I'll also have a link to mum's shop <clears throat> in the description below. Um, excuse my voice if I sound funny or sniffly. We had a massive dust storm here two days ago. My, the whole house is still dusty. I've been like wiping down and vacuuming and it just won't stop. And I've been all like dried out and congested. I'm feeling a little better now, but um, <clears throat> I'm still recovering. So sorry about that. I have a lot to talk about today. So many things, so many things to talk about. Um, because when you don't do a video for three months, a lot of stuff happens. <laughs> um, I actually didn't stitch for quite a lot of that three months uh, for about probably half of December and almost all of January I barely stitched I was um, playing Minecraft mainly <laughs> um, playing Minecraft with my nephew playing Minecraft with friends I played a lot of League of Legends as well um, yeah there was a game mode out for Christmas a crazy fun game mode and I had a lot of fun doing that um, yeah so I've been working at the new job. It's going well. Thanks for asking. Um, it's going well. It's... I'm still learning how to do it because I've never worked in security before. I'm a cyber security anal cyber defense analyst now. Um, yeah, and I have never done work like that before. I used to be a software engineer, so it's very different, but I the pace is really good. It's not stressful at all. Basically, I spend a lot of my time waiting for an alert to come up. When the alert comes, I do some investigation and it's usually a false positive, so I just put it away and wait for the next alert. And then when I'm doing a night shift or a weekend shift, it's very quiet. And usually I'm just waiting for a denial of service alarm to go off. And when that's not happening, I can <laughs> get some stitching done. And I actually have done some stitching at work. That's better. Sorry, I should have put that light on before we started. A little too much? Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, the first thing I want to show you is some FFOs. I've done some framing. Um, and I want to show you them now because I want to get them off the desk so I can put the other stuff on the desk. Um, I use the desk to like set up all the things I'm going to talk about so I can reach them. Um, but the FFOs are taking up the whole desk. So I've had some things framed. The first, I ordered the frames for all of these from the frameshop.com.au. And I got the frames and they're very cheap. Um, some of them aren't great quality. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll point it out when I get to it. But they're really cheap and I'll definitely order from them again because it was so easy to frame them and put them in and finish them off and it was like instant gratification. Whereas the frame shop I've been going to, I drop it in, it takes six to eight weeks and it cost me probably three or four times more than these did. So the first FFO I did was this one. This is Red Skies at Night by Mirabilia. It's from the book 20 Years of Witch Elt, or a Witch Elt in Celebration of 20 Years, I think that's what it's called. Um, you can get that book on 123 Stitch, you can get it on Lakeside Needlecraft, no sorry, you can get it on soandso.co.uk. Um, I don't know where you can get it in Australia and I've already gifted my copy to someone, I'm very sorry, but this is Red Skies at Night. I don't know how well you can tell, but this frame is actually Mother of Pearl. It's not really, it's like plastic. Um, but it's got a sort of Mother of Pearl finish, which I thought was really nice because you can see these giant pearl beads here. So I thought that um, complemented, the frame complemented those pearls quite well. Yes, I know it's not straight. Thank you. Um, all of these, the first thing my husband said when I showed him was, oh, it's not straight. <laughs> Thanks, husband. It's good enough for me. I can't be bothered getting it any better. Um, I didn't realise that these were going to come with the sticky mat board. 
um, and I did use the sticky mat board but in future I won't get sticky mat board I'd rather stretch it um, than stick it because it's really hard to reposition it's not hard to reposition but it's hard to get things perfectly straight with the sticky mat board whereas when you're um, pinning and lacing it's a lot easier so I'm really happy with this I got this finished um, because the Mirabilia retreat is this weekend <gasps> tomorrow morning I'm driving up to Terrigal um, which is a seaside town about an hour north of Sydney I think um, well it's about four hours from here from Canberra um, and I'm going tomorrow and I'm staying with people I've never met but I'm sure they're lovely <laughs> um, I'm staying in the hotel that the retreats at which I've never done before um, and Nora's coming Nora Corbett herself um, and so I finished this off so I can show it off at the retreat um, I'll also be taking my finished um, Bella Bee and Bella Butterfly um, for the show-off table, but I didn't frame those yet because there are still two more for me to stitch in the series and I probably won't frame them. I might frame them all together, but I haven't decided, so I, I haven't, haven't FFO'd those two, but this one I have and I love it. I think it looks amazing. I'm so proud of it. So that's one FFO. The next three FFOs, the reason I got them done is for the Canberra Royal Show, which is coming up in two weeks, I think. Um, these pieces are actually going to be dropped off on Sunday. Tim's going to drop them off for me because I'll be away at the retreat and they'll all be judged for the show. So everyone talks about entering their work in the show and I've always wanted to, so here we go. This is it. So I'm entering Shroomhilda. Isn't she adorable? I really like her. Another thing I don't like about the adhesive mat board is that it's shiny and I know that you can see I know that you can see the light reflecting off the mat board. See? I don't like that. Um, but, oh well, too bad. Isn't she cute? She's so adorable. I really like her sparkle and her beads. And I love the frame I chose for her. I tried so many frames for her. I tried something purple. I tried something grey. I tried lots of different wood finishes. I tried white. Um, and in the end, this particular shade of dark brown was the best. So I've, I finished all these just with paper on the back and double-sided tape, but the double-sided tape isn't really sticking, so I'm constantly having to kind of re-stick the back. I don't know what I can use that's going to stick to the wood better than double-sided tape. If anyone has any ideas, let me know. But yes, they're all fully finished. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I love her. So she's going in the show. Um, the next one that's going in the show is Silver Medieval Sampler. I love this too. I'm really proud of this. Um, this silver frame I thought was going to be more sort of pewtery, but it's a bit shinier than I expected, but I think it still works, so we're going with it. Yes, I know it's not straight. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this. I'm so proud of it. It looks amazing. I think it looks amazing at least. I love it. That's going to the show and the last one that's going to the show. Hold on, I'm gonna need both hands for this. Ta-da! Oh, isn't that amazing? That's Japanese Octagon Box um, by Chatelaine, as I know you all know. And look at this frame. This frame cost me like $80, including, see the double mats, the shiny gold mat. Um, whereas if I'd taken this to my local frame shop, I got a quote for sort of something similar and it was going to be $350. <laughs> so yeah, I will be going with um, frameshop.com.au again. Even though you can see the corners aren't good, like you can see raw wood there where the corners are joined. And you probably can't see very well, but there are cuts into the edges of the mats and stuff like that. But if I'm saving $280 on the on the framing then I'm okay with that I can live with a little bit of imperfection so yes I think this looks amazing I really like I'm really happy with the if you don't know I um, did all this satin stitch between each of the windows each of the panels and I really like the effect that gives that you're actually looking out a window that's what I wanted um, so yeah I'm super duper happy with this and it's going into the show and um, I think there are prizes for first, second, third and so on, but 
that's not really why I'm entering it. I'm just entering it because I want to show my stuff off. I don't get to show it to that many people very often and I want people to see it. That's all. I don't know. Maybe someone will see it and they'll say, oh, cross stitch, I haven't done that in years. And then they'll pick it up again and do it again. And the other one that's going in the show is Gaze A While. Um, glare everywhere. Gaze A While from The Heart's Content. Um, this frame came from Kitten Stitcher. It's a tiny one that she gets at a craft store near her and she painted it. Um, and it doesn't, isn't a perfect fit in the frame. You can see some of it. There's fabric showing on the sides and at the top and bottom a little bit of the stitching is cut off. But it's very hard to get a small frame so this is what we're working with. Hi! Whoa! Frameception. Floss tubeception. Um, yeah, so this is going to the show too. Even though I don't really expect anyone will appreciate what 40 count silk gauze means. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, those are my FFOs. I also have a finish, um, which is right here. Let me get something white to put behind it. I finished this yesterday. Oh, how cute is that? That's my name, Tash Kiermaier. Don't wear it out. Um, this is called Sampler Name Tag by Sharon Cohen of Nostalgic Needle. And as you can see, mine's a little bit different. Um, I had to make mine wider because my ridiculous surname is ridiculous. <laughs> so I had to make mine wider. So as you can see, I had to add an extra strawberry and make some changes to the other bands just so things would fit. And that is how it ended up. And I'm really happy with it. I like it a lot. Um, it's 32 count tea, coffee dyed, I don't know, linen. Um, it was a scrap that I had left over from something and I tea and coffee dyed it ages ago. There, that colour's much better. And the colours are so 90s. Well, I think the chart was like 2006 or something, but the colours are so 90s. Um, and I love it. The thing, the only thing I'm not super pleased about is that it turned out so big. You know, it's um, for a name tag. It's actually really big. Like, I'm definitely not going to stick this on my on my chest. I might put it on, on a lanyard around my neck. Don't know. But yeah, I think it's adorable. It turned out very nicely. Um, there are rice stitches over one, queen stitches, modified eyelets, and lots of satin stitch, and long arm cross stitch, running, double running stitch. That's it. That's everything. So yeah, I like that. And that's my only finish. Um, I think it's the only finish since November. Um, yeah, I'm going to have another finish today, um, which will be an ATC I'm working on. ATCs are artist trading cards. I've talked about them before. It's a little three and a half by two and a half inch trading card. They fit in a little sleeve like that. And it's an exchange um, that I'm doing through the Instagram group cross stitch ATCs. Um, so the theme for this month is is fictional heroes. So I'm stitching someone really good. Um, I'm sending it to someone awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm working on that and I'll probably finish it today, which is good. So I can head off to the retreat tomorrow and stitch on my mirabilias all weekend. Uh, yay! Okay, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to put this stuff away. So I've got some room to show you all the other things I need to show you. Pause. Okay, I obviously don't know the difference between a pause button and a stop button, so I think I can cobble those together when I edit. Um, so, as I said, I haven't done much stitching. <laughs> I also don't have a lot of haul. Um, I'm doing Stitch from Stash this year um, with a small budget. I think the max budget you can have is 25 American dollars or the equivalent in your own currency. 25 American dollars is about 35 Australian dollars, so that's my budget. Um, and I'm actually still in the green. I only spent $20 in January, and I've only spent $12 so far in February. Although I am about to go away to a stitching retreat this weekend. And then in the beginning of May, I'll be in America <laughs> at National Market, so I expect that to get blown out of the water. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, swings and roundabouts. I'll just have to get some finishes to pay it off. Um, yeah, also since I started the new job, I'm getting paid a lot less. Um, 
it's actually a lot, <laughs> even less than I thought it was going to be because during this last three months I haven't done any shifts because I've been training so I've just been working weekday mornings and of course weekday morning shifts don't attract any penalty rates so <laughs> um, yeah money's been really kind of tight um, to that end I've also cancelled my Victorian motto fabric and thread of the month thread of, of Victorian motto floss of the month um, I'm still doing my XG designs fabric of the month until February because it's prepaid and I haven't decided if I will be able to continue it later into the year um, I'm just having to cut back on all the unnecessaries because I still haven't paid my health insurance bill <laughs> um, yeah so oh well <laughs> but I'm still going to the retreats the priorities you know um, but yeah I will show you what I have accumulated since we spoke um, 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 so for Christmas I got a really nice present from my sister actually I think my mom helped her orchestrate it but what I got was a bobbin lace kit oh, with a giant cookie pillow <laughs> check out this whoa that's 20 inches of cookie pillow I'm keeping it in the plastic so that it doesn't get um, doesn't get sorry I know people don't like that noise so it doesn't get um, dusty or dirty um, but yeah, this bobbin lace kit, it came with two spools of thread, some pins, a pin cushion, um, the bobbins. So I think I got 20, 12 pairs or 20 pairs of bobbins like this um, with spangles on the end. I actually didn't want the ones with spangles. I wanted to get the, the ones with the rounded ends and I wanted to paint them, but... Since it was a gift, it got given to me, so I'll, I'll acquire my own bobbins as I go. Um, there's some more bobbins, as you can see, I have actually been practicing. I have been playing with this kit, but I haven't made anything. I played, it came with a book like this. This came from Snow Goose Lace. Came with a beginner's book, and I've been working through some of the beginner sort of patterns um, and learning the beginner stitches, but after I've you know, sort of worked down the pattern a little bit. The pattern. I'll work down the pattern all the way to there and then I'll just stop and undo it so I can reuse the lace because these are just, you can see my pricks, because these are just these are just learner patterns to teach you the stitches. Um, this also comes with a few other patterns. Let me show you. I think next I'm doing spiders, which will be this one. This one on the left. And this one is obviously a border or an edging. And then I've got some more complicated ones here. So that's what I'm going on to next. I haven't spent much time with this. I'd like to do more, but you know, time, obviously. At least with the new job, I get lots of, um, I get lots of days off. I only work 25 shifts every six weeks. Um, and because some are weekend shifts and night shifts, I get a lot of days off. Um, which is good. So hopefully I will have more time for this kind of thing. On another note, I've also been spending my time um, playing piano because my piano is back in my house, um, which is really nice. It's been at my sister's house for the last few years, but she moved back to Perth and didn't take the piano with her. So I've been playing piano, um, which is lovely. It's so nice. It's just something I do for fun. Um, I did learn a bit when I was younger, but for years now I've just done it for fun. Um, and I've also been playing video games, as I mentioned. Um, this week I've been playing a game called Gri. It's Spanish for grey. G-R-I-S. Um, and it's beautiful and sad. And such a good game. <laughs> um, if you're not into games, you won't understand. It's an indie game, sort of a platformer, light puzzle game. Very easy and very... Um, it's more about the story. It's very meaningful. It's very sad. Oh, I'm almost finished. Okay, um, sorry, I got sidetracked. We can talk about some haul. This is the one thing I bought in January. This was a piece of fabric. Oh, shit, sorry. This came from Debbie, um, one of our stitching friends who comes to the um, weekend meetups we have here in Canberra. Um, and she was selling off some of her fabric and I bought a piece of Jaslyn 32 count. It's a silk weaver solo, so there's no colour name. But this is the piece. Um, it's a fat border. This is folded up. Um, yep, so that was all I bought in January. 
Aren't you proud of me? I'm proud of me. Um, then she also, she also gifted me a passion. We had arranged that I was going to buy this from her, but she just decided to gift it to me because she's a lovely human. Um, and this is Lila's Studio, Happy Holidays, no, Holiday Quaker, and it's lovely. I mean, everyone's seen this pattern, it's just so nice. God knows when I'll start it, but, you know, always nice to have more passions. Okay, and then, um, before my sister moved away, I actually um, looked through all her cross-stitch patterns. She used to cross-stitch when we were kids. Um, but she hasn't done it for years now. I actually kitted up a whole mirabilia for her a few years ago because she said she wanted to stitch. Can you stop that dog? She said she wanted to stitch, so I kitted up Petal Fairy from Mirabilia with specialty fabric and... Hey! Stop! Sorry. With specialty fabric and with all the beads and, and you know, all the stuff. That was a lot of money for me to spend. This was ten years ago. And she hasn't stitched it. She said she still has the kit. I'm like, well, give it back to me because I think that chart might be out of print now and someone might appreciate it. But no. Anyway, she let me look through her patterns and she actually had a pattern that I've been looking for for years. This, when I first started watching Floss Tube at the end of 2016, one of the first people I started watching was um, Laurie from Mischievous Stitches and she stitched this. And it was the first pattern that I saw on Floss Tube that I was like, have to have that and I still haven't been able to get a hold of it two years three two years later yeah nearly three years later um, and despite having a search set up on eBay and missing out on many auctions um, all the, all this time it was sitting in my sister's stash and it's this one the tapestry sampler from Pat Rogers I love it and I love it and it's so 90s and old-fashioned and cool and I love it and I'm so pleased um, yeah look at the chart oh that's big um, yeah oh, gosh and it actually has a really big color list mmm lots of colors yeah so again I don't know when I'll stitch this but I'm so pleased that I have it it was just sitting there in my sister's stash all along she had a couple of other Pat Rogers charts she had a few just Nans. She had a lot of Alma Lynn. She used to love Alma Lynn. Um, Paula Vaughan. Precious Moments. Um, a couple of Teresa Wenslers, but I think I already have them. You know, she's got some good stuff and she doesn't even know what she has. So, so pleased with that. And I think that's all of my haul. I thought one thing, one more thing, um, in February, um, I've bought the pattern that I'm using for this ATC that I'm making that I'm going to finish today. Um, that was an Etsy purchase. It was $12. I can't show you because it will give away what I'm stitching and it's supposed to be a surprise. Um, but yeah, it, that was $12. I think I've still got like $46 or something. I'm in the green. I'm happy with that. So let's talk about whips. Actually, this might be new. This might be new since the last time we spoke. Our forest embroidery. And since we're talking about whips, I'll show you. Um, I received this, I think, after my last video, so you may have seen it, I may have shown you, but I don't think so. Um, it's the full kit, it comes with the threads, Ooh. um, and the pattern, and it comes with a needle binder, came with the fabric, came with a needle, <laughs> came with everything. Um, and I started this as a stitch along with Yanni, and, and she's already finished it. Um, yeah, of course, I knew she would finish it in like two days, and I'm still going. But that's what I've done so far. The lovely Udo Whale. There's the needle minder that comes with the kit. And this is just adorable, isn't it? I love it. I love it. Um, it's by Al Forest Embroidery. Um, don't know what the fabric is. It's something stamped. Looks like vintage country mocha, but more yellow. Yellow, not tan. Um, yeah, this is so pretty. So that's obviously the head of the whale. And if you look at the pattern, so I've done basically this section, so I still have to do down here and then the other half basically. Um, isn't it cute? It's so pretty. I love this. It's very nice. Um, it's a Russian fairy tale, the marvellous whale 
you know, or something. And it's a fairy tale I did read when I was younger. Um, and I reread it again before I stitched this. Because I remember reading about the whale where these people had <laughs> built their houses into his back. Built, like, driven the, the nails in and ploughing the land on his lip to plant their crops. Like, it was really sad. Um, yeah, I always felt really sorry for this poor whale. But this was his punishment. Um, because he ate a whole horde of, a whole 20 ships or something. So he was being punished by having these people live on him. Um, and then, of course, he gets a happy ending in the fairy tale. But, yeah, you know. I love this and I think it's really nice. I did substitute one colour. Um, so the brown in this house. It was supposed to be stitched in this colour. This sort of yellow colour. Um, so that's what it was supposed to be. But looking at the other colours on here, there's already two other oranges. This orange here that I'm not a fan of. And this beautiful, beautiful bright orange down here. And I thought if I add in this yellow, it's just going to be so orange and yellow, you know? It's already quite autumn-y already, but I just wanted to make the house brown. So anywhere this yellow appears, I'm doing it with the brown now. So up here on this star is the only other place so far that I've had to use it. But... Yeah, that's a little change I made just because I didn't like the didn't like the yellow so much. So there's that one. So I worked on this late November or early December, I think, and I haven't touched it yet this year. This is one of my um ooh, I haven't made a video about stitch 19. <laughs> um I'm not doing stitch 9 officially, but I've chosen 19 projects for Gear of Whips. And I decided I'm just going to call that Stitch 19. Um, this is one of my Stitch 19 pieces. So I'll finish this this year. Hopefully. Um, when we left each other, you probably remember that I was working on Esther's Waves. Uh, I don't know if I have the cover photo. It's in this pile somewhere, but it might not be easy to find. Okay, well, I'm going to assume when I show you that you'll know what I'm talking about. So Esther's Waves. Oops, that's the back. Esther's Waves. So yes, that's all I've done. Try and give you a close up. It's really, really pretty and detailed and lovely. Oops, let me show you the bottom too. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's so pretty. Um, but I put it down. The reason I started this is because I wanted to enter it in the Canberra show. Um, I already showed you the pieces I am entering and this isn't one of them <laughs> because it's not finished. Um, the Canberra show has a special category um, that's a theme. You have to stitch something for the theme. And the theme is Wonderful Water. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I didn't finish this in time and in November I realised no, in December I realised I probably wasn't going to stitch it in time. And I really put that down to the fact that I didn't stitch for weeks, weeks, weeks. Um, for about six weeks I didn't stitch. Um, I was playing Minecraft. Uh, and so this did not get finished. Um, I also was having problems with the beads. This is a 36 count hand dyed. And I knew that the beads would be tight. Um, but there are places like here where you're supposed to do five in a row and they are just a little bit too tight. They work, but I think here I was supposed to do five as well, but I actually left the center one out so that they'd fit. Um, but what I've decided is I'm going to get some petite beads or some delicate beads so that I can bead it as it's supposed to be beaded. Um, going down. Um, I'll leave what's here, but you know, going down, I'd like to use some smaller beads so that it works a bit better. So that's where I am with this. That's why I stopped. I knew I would never be able to get the smaller beads in time. Because, you know, they'd have to come from Amer from America. Because I don't think... Does anyone know where I can get delicas in Australia? I doubt it. Um, so, but I still love this. It's gorgeous. It's a lot of work too. It was taking me about a week to do each row. And that was, you know, not stitching on anything else. So it's a lot of work. Sorry, I'm actually going to fold this with the beads on the inside so they don't get bumped around or anything. Okay. Um, yeah, that's Esther's Waves by Northern Expression Needleworks. And the fabric is 36 count sand dune, I think. 
Who likes side lunettes? I think it's Sanji. If I, if I had the cover picture, I could. I wrote it on there, so I could tell you. Um. So I've done some work on this one. This is one I started in November. It is Yuletide Shanty by Plum Street Samplers. That little drum. Super cute. Um, that's on the side. It's a way with some presents. And I started on the side. I wanted to have this finished at Christmas time, but it didn't happen. It did not happen. Because I didn't stitch, as I told you. So, here we are. There we go. You can see a whale's tail. And you can see a lovely seaweed Christmas tree. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's about... It's not halfway. It's about a third of the way across the side. Um, this is a 40 count natural linen of some kind. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's really fun to stitch actually. The, the whale is going to be a lot of stitching. Because if you look at the picture, that's a big whale. That's a big whale. That's a lot of stitches. Um, but gosh, he's going to look cute. I'm very happy with him. You know my favourite thing about this chart is the bottom. I don't know if you can read that. The bottom says... Old Saint Nick, he sails the seas, his beard grows long so he won't freeze. I think it's so cute. So yeah, that's um, probably coming out later in the year. This is another Stitch 19 piece for me. Um, so I'll finish it this year. Also I'm going to a retreat in November with Paulette Stewart <laughs> from Plum Street Samplers. Um, here in, in Terrigal again actually. Um, so. Yeah, I'll have to have it finished by then. Hopefully. <laughs> um, that'll be my goal. I'd love to have a finished Palm Street to take to meet Paulette. Um, I also worked on... Oops. Oh, I've seen a lovely project bag. This was $3 from, um, <laughs> from Kmart, I think. Yeah, it's, it drops glitter stuff everywhere, so it's not the best project bag, but it's fun. This one my mum brought back from from um, England for me, Morris and Co. Isn't it beautiful? I actually went to the um, the National Gallery here in Canberra has a display of pre-Raphaelite designs, paintings um, come over from the Tate. Um, so my mum and my sister and I went a couple of weekends ago. They actually had the Strawberry Thief tapestry there. Um, quite a few William Morris. Loads of... Um, Oh, three huge Waterhouse pieces. Oh, I love them. Um, and loads of other artists. Lots of It was like walking through heaven and earth designs. <laughs> Someone actually commented that on my pictures on Instagram and I was like, yeah. That's how I learned about a lot of those artists through looking at heaven and earth designs charts. And John William Waterhouse is my favourite artist and one of my favourites is the Magic Circle. And that was there. And it was just amazing. So that was the Magic Circle. There was Cersei in Vidiosa, you know, the one where she's poisoning the water, um, and the Lady of Shalott. Oh, that was amazing. And then also um, Ophelia, the John Hughes, I think, Hughes. Um, Ophelia. Amazing, amazing. Anyway, I digress. I have been doing a little bit of work on this one, which is Sally Spencer. And there it is. This is 40 Count Ale. Yep, the colour looks good. Um, I'm not totally confident that I've chosen the right fabric for these colours. So that's basically all I've done. I have decided to do the letters of the alphabet um, in eyelets because I feel like that's really samplery. A lot of samplers have eyelets, eyelet alphabets, so I'm doing it just to make things a bit harder for myself. <laughs> um, but I really like this. This is fun to work on and because I've got it in this little compact bag, it's kind of becoming a bit of a travel piece because it's easy to take along with me. Um, and I don't have a problem seeing 40 count without magnification. So as long as the light is decent, I'm good. So, I did some work on that. Um, as I mentioned, I have been able to get some stitching done at work, which is very nice. <laughs> living the dream. Um, yeah, whenever I stitch at work, I use hashtag living the dream because everyone loves to get paid to stitch, don't they? Um, so at work, I've been working on Dartha. And here she is so far. Dartha is going to look like this when she's finished. 
which is a long bell pull. See that little picture there? Uh, it's not very clear. Yep, she's an angel and she's very long. <laughs> so it looks like I'm, I've done, so when I'm stitching on it, I think, oh, I've done heaps, but um, she has a very long dress. This is a very long piece of fabric. So yeah, <laughs> she's big, um, but she's really pretty. I like her. She's really old fashioned colors and there's loads of beads on this, so I've been leaving lots of spaces for beads. Um, yeah, this is 14 count um, Rustico Ada. There we go. That's Dartha. I think I'll continue to work on her at work um, because she's easy to take along. Um, kits are good for traveling projects because everything's in one place. Oops, I'm dropping the lace. Okay. Oh, well, I made a mess of that. Never mind. Um, and a forest grew. I'm still working on it. I think I missed a few weekends during November, December when I didn't stitch because I was playing Minecraft. Have I mentioned that? I was playing Minecraft. Um, <laughs> so I did actually fall behind a few weeks, but you know, it happens. So here we are. And a forest grew. This is page seven about here. So we're well into page six now. Um, page six is there. Then page five, page four, page five, four, and three are like mostly the verse in the middle. And I'm going to leave that till the end because I need to recharge it and I can't be bothered <laughs> at this point. So I'll work across until I get to the verse, which I think, mm, yeah, the tree comes up here. So I think it's about there. And then I'll cut, go over to page one, two, and three and do that. And then I'll do the verse at the end. But even doing all of that, I won't finish this this year if I stick to my two motifs a week. Um, this will be finished in 2019. So this isn't one of my Stitch 9 pieces. By the way, Sally Spencer is a Stitch 9 piece. Stitch 19. Not Stitch 9. <laughs> okay. Um, this is the last... No. The thing I've been spending most of my time on is Sarah Brazier. Ta-da! Doesn't she look amazing? I love her. Um, so I've come down to my favourite part of the chart. Uh, let me... No, I can't rest that on there. Okay. I'm just going to have to rest it on my chin. Uh, no, I can't do that. Okay. Well, this peacock here and the, and the tree, I've been looking forward to getting to this the whole time. Unfortunately, the page cuts off about here, so I have to wait until I get to the next page because I can't work on the whole thing because these bars are too narrow. Um, so I've come over to this... Arbor or whatever this is here. These pretty flowers here. Everything in this chart is asymmetrical. Like if you look at these flowers, the satin stitch in them, straight up and down satin, straight up and down satin, straight up and down satin, diagonal satin. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's um delightful. And there's the verse. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You can see Sarah sort of had trouble keeping her line straight because these first few words go on a total diagonal. Um, and I've started the giant heart in the middle with the crazy psychedelic eyes. Yep, so I've got a lot to go. I came down and worked on this border because the border takes a long time and is very um, monotonous. <laughs> so I thought I'll break up this fun stuff with a bit of border. And then um, when I come down to the other side, <laughs> When I get to the end of the row, I might have to do two sets of border, like this set of border and then the next set of border. All at once, I sort of broke it up a bit, so. Um, because I've just finished the name tag, I'll finish my ATC today. I will work on Mirabilia on the weekend, and then when I come home, I'll pick this back up. Because I need to finish this bad boy by May. Um, yeah, by May. So I have two more ro full rows of pages. This is the third row. This page here is actually the centre page. So I'm officially halfway, um, but I only have two and a half months left to finish it. And I have seven, 14, 16 pages to do in 10 weeks. Um, so I don't actually know if it's possible for me to finish it on time, but, but I'll try. No, 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 not 16. They're five pages across. No, seven pages. It is seven pages across. Seven pages across and five rows. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll finish this. Because <laughs> um, it has been taking me about a week to finish a page. So 
I may not finish this in time, which I'll be very sad about, but nevertheless, it is still fun to work on. And this is a stitch 19 piece. And when I finish it, I will feel very accomplished. Okay, don't get it on there. Um, I've had one start so far this year. Actually, I've had two starts. One is the ATC that I can't show you. But the other start is this one. This is Miyazaki's Worlds. Um, this is from a Russian designer called Sasha Shilova. And I bought this from her. You can contact her at this email address and buy this if you want to. Um, if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli, then you understand what all these, who all these people are. Um, yeah, this is gorgeous. I love it. Um, if you've seen Spirited Away or Howl's Moving Castle or um, any Ponyo, there's loads of movies on here. But these are just all Princess Mononoke. These are all, you know, pieces from those movies. I started this with Lindsay, Pink Stitcher. Um, this was her birthday start. So... As a good friend, I decided to join in. <laughs> um, and this is what I've done so far. Whoa! Oh my god, look at that. How amazing is that? <laughs> um, so what you're seeing here is basically the roof of this house. Yeah, not very exciting. Um, the needle minder is cute though, isn't it? Um, yeah, not a big start. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is started though, so that's, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just... At this point, I don't, I don't want to get back to this. It's not one of my Stitch 19 pieces. It's not Sarah Brazier. And honestly, she's my next priority to finish. That's, she's like my main focus for the, until she's done. So, although I love this, I'm not planning on getting back to this anytime soon. But that was my start. I didn't have a new year new start. I was going to. I had planned to all the way up until January 1st. Um, this is Nova by Jenny Morrow Designs. Um, it's a canvas work piece. I love it. looks like a color wash quilt. I love it. Beautiful bright colors. I have the canvas. I have all the threads. It's just um, DNC and anchor. Um, it's a chunkus book. Like, it's a big book. Um, I've had this for years and I was going to start it this year. I think you might have seen, I think Heidi Cran started it last year. I think it was Heidi. Um, and she started it along with some other people and I think they planned to stitch a whole row a week or something crazy like that. Um, I don't know how they went with that. I should go and check out Heidi Cran again and see how she went. Um, but yes, this, um, the thing is it came to New Year's Day and I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I can't be bothered. I've got the stretcher bars. I've got the canvas. I've got the threads. I have everything. I just didn't want to start it. I thought about it and I said, you know what, I'd rather go and play some more League of Legends or Minecraft. So I did that instead. <laughs> um, so maybe next year, maybe next year I'll start that one. Um, it's another good one where I feel that I can do, you know, one square a week or something. Maybe two or three squares a week in the way that I do two motifs a week on And a Forest Group. So that'll be fun when I start it, but I just didn't want another start this year. So it didn't happen. So... I think that's everything I was going to show you. Let me see if there was anything else I was going to talk about. I didn't write anything down. <laughs> um, I was going to talk about last year with the numbers of how many things I started and FFO'd and finished. Um, I think it was 27 finishes and 33 starts. So that's not bad. Only six more starts than finishes. I think it was something big like 12 FFO's or 16 FFO's or something. That's, that's quite a lot for me. Um, I don't like FFOing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I can think of to say, guys. Um, I'm off to my retreat tomorrow, so I might do some video at the retreat. I probably won't, because I'm just not good at doing that. Um, I don't like pulling my camera out and saying to everyone, Hey, do you mind being on video? It's just awkward and weird. And I feel awkward and weird enough anyway. Um, I actually know some of the people I'm sitting at a table with, and I still feel awkward and weird. I don't know what it is. I just, I get, I'm not scared of people. I just don't like talking. Um, it's hard to carry on conversation and I don't know. It's going to be a lot of fun though. So <laughs> I'm psyching myself out. I get to this point where it's the day before or the day of and I go, nah, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I feel just, I'd rather stay home and stitch. Why do I have to go away to stitch? But I know it'll be so much fun. Um, 
Um, yeah, okay. Don't even get me started on how, how nervous I am about Nashville. Super duper nervous. Um, yeah, anyway. I think that's all, guys. I will let you go. Um, I may do some video over the weekend at the Mirror Retreat. I will try not to buy too much stuff. I might not buy anything. If I'm really, really good, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Keep the videos coming, because I like watching them. Bye!